Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Tuition here and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2012 PUA paper 2. If you want to check out the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so the first thing they're asking us to do is simply to define the term depreciation. So you can have simple definitions, you can have complicated definitions. It's only worth two marks, so don't go overboard. What I put is very simple. Depreciation is the loss in value of a non-current asset over time. Simple and straightforward. Let's check out the next part of the question where they're asking us to identify the double entry used to record depreciation. Again, two marks. Now you have a couple of options and I'm going to show you both of them here. You can either debit income statement or the depreciation expense account and credit the provision for depreciation. Now, the convention that we use for CSEC POA in the Caribbean is to debit the income statement, right? We use this as the adjusting and closing entry for depreciation. However, there has been a movement towards using the depreciation expense account, which um, has been around for quite some time, but it's more American-based, whereas we are usually British-based. But again, neither one is incorrect. So you can either debit income statement or the depreciation expense account and credit the provision for depreciation account. Okay, the third part of part A says to state three causes of depreciation. Now they said to state, they didn't say to explain. So as you can see what I have here, three causes of depreciation are wear and tear from use. So when you use the asset, it wears out obsolescence or inadequacy so this is like when a newer model of something like a phone or a computer or a printer comes out and it does not just what the old model did but even more so the old model can no longer well eventually will no longer be able to handle the requirements placed upon it it will be inadequate or obsolete for its purpose and i have here the passage or efflection of time so as time passes things just sort of get older and become less able to do what, they, what they're supposed to do all right, and I have a bonus one here because you know me, I don't like to just give you guys exactly what they ask you for. I like to give you a little extra when I can. So bonus, depletion. So this is for biological assets, for example, like if you have crops like orange trees or um, anything along those lines, right? So when you pick your crops, you have less of those crops left, right? Or natural resources, like if you have, like if there was an oil field or a natural gas field or a quarry, the more you extract from the earth is the less there is left. It's not usually self-replenishing, okay? Okay, so that was the quote-unquote theory part. Let's take a look at part B where we have some depreciation calculations. Alrighty, so part B reads as follows. Tamron Company bought equipment costing 80000 and charged depreciation at a rate of 10% per annum using the reducing balance method. So under the reducing balance method, we'll multiply the rate of depreciation, the 10%, by the net book value of the asset at the start of the period. How do we find net book value? Well, that's cost minus the accumulated depreciation, which is all of the depreciation on the asset up to that point in time. Now, it says here, using the information above, copy and complete the table for the first three years of the equipment's life. That's 11 marks. So I'm going to show you the table as the paper presented it. So you have a column for the years, and you have a column for cost or net book value before depreciation, net book value at the start of the year. Then you have the depreciation expense for the year, which is 10% of the value at start. Then you have the accumulated depreciation, which will simply be the sum of all of the depreciation expenses as you go down year by year, and then a net book value after depreciation. Now, normally I would not include an accumulated depreciation column because I find it messes up the flow of the, the table, of the schedule. But I mean, we have to be able to roll with whatever they've given us and to do what is required. So let me pull up my table across here. So, so the net book value would start for this asset. That's the cost of the asset. So in year one, when we just buy the asset, there's no depreciation already charged on it. Hence, the net book value at the start of year one will be the same as the cost of the asset, which is why in the question, in the table in the question, they said cost or net book value before depreciation. Now, the depreciation expense for the year is 10% of the value at start. 10% of 80,000 is 8,000. The accumulated depreciation, like I was saying a bit before, is the total of all of the depreciation charged on the asset over its life. Now, there's only one year's worth of depreciation, so that's the only amount that we can add to get accumulated depreciation. And then finally, net book value at end 
is the net book value at start minus the depreciation expense for the year. So 18 minus 8 gives us 72,000. Now, the net book value at the end of one year becomes the net book value at the start of the following year. So 72,000 was the net book value of the asset at the end of year one. So at the start of year two, guess what? The net book value at start will be 72,000. Now we just rinse and repeat. The depreciation expense for the year is 10% of the value at start. 10% of 72,000 is 7,200. Now, the accumulated depreciation is the sum of all of the individual depreciation expense figures over the asset's entire useful life thus far. There have been two years worth of depreciation, so the accumulated depreciation in the second year will be 15,200. That's 8,000 plus the 7,200. All right, so again, to accumulate means to build up over time. So accumulated depreciation is the sum of all of the depreciation on the asset over its useful life. So it's only been in use for two years, and we have two years worth of depreciation, which when added together gives us the accumulated depreciation at the end of that year. Now the net book value at the end of the year, like I said, is the net book value at start minus the depreciation expense. And 72,000 minus 7,200 will give us 64,800. And as I mentioned before, the net book value at the end of one year becomes the value at the start of the next year. So we're going to bring down the 64,800. The depreciation expense for year three is 10% of the net book value at start. That's going to be 6,480. Now, the accumulated depreciation figure will be the sum of all three of the depreciation expenses so far over the asset's useful life. So that's going to be 21,680. And the net book value at end, like I was saying, is the net book value at start minus the depreciation expense for the year, and that gives us 58,320. Now, I did something a little extra, what I call a cross-check column. Okay, so what I do with the cross-check column is I take the cost of the asset and minus the accumulated depreciation in any given year. Well, in the year, which, in whichever row I am, right? So, know what I said, it's the cost. So, I'm only going to be using the 80,000. I'm not going to be using 72 or 64, 8. And instead of subtracting or, or, or using a value at start and subtracting the depreciation expense for the year, I'm going to take the value at start, the cost, and minus these figures one at a time going down. And what that's supposed to give me, it's supposed to match these figures here, right? So in the cross-check column for year one, I'm going to take 80 and minus 8. Now, I got 72 by taking 80 and minus 8. So this figure here is also going to be 72,000. Right? Now for the second year for the cross check for the net book value at end, it's the cost of the asset minus the total accumulated depreciation at the end of the second year. And again, you see it's matching with the 64,800 there. So we're good to go. At the end of the third year, right? So third year, to find the net book value, we're gonna take the, sorry, the cost of the asset. I almost made a mistake that most people make. The cost of the asset and subtract the total for accumulated depreciation in year three, or at the end of year three rather. And that's gonna give us the same 58,320 as we got when we took 64.8 and subtracted 64.80. Okay, that's the end of part B, well, part B part one. Let's take a look at part B part two. Okay, so the final thing they're asking us to do is to draw up the balance sheet extract for the equipment at the end of the third year of use. We are going to be using the non-current asset section from a statement of financial position. So actually, let me pull that up so you can see what we're talking, what I'm talking about. So this is what we're going to be using here, right? So of course, don't forget to head up your statement properly. Tamarin Company, statement of financial position, extract as at the end of year three. They didn't give us any specific years like 2011, 2012. So don't worry about it too much, right? So of course, you know your column headings or you should know your column headings by now. Cost, accumulated depreciation, and network value. Now there's only one asset that we're dealing with, which is the equipment. The cost of the equipment, as we know, is 80,000. At the end of the third year, the total for accumulated depreciation as per the table is the 21,680. So we're going to populate that in that column. And when we subtract going across, we are going to get the 58,320. Right? Just like I was saying in the depreciation schedule. Right? You take your value at start, you minus your total accumulated depreciation, and you get your net book value at end. Okay, all right, so that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the Jan 2012 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. 
Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.